Yeah, so one of the ideas I wish to comment on that Weiniger mentioned, oh that's a, you can see a, along there, that's a wallaby track, is, um, I'll take the wallaby track, this idea of non-empirical psychology, which is not a very popular idea, but it's actually quite valid, and empirical psychology is actually insane if you think about it. Um, oops. Careful. Is the foot pad? Yes. Uh, Non-biological, non-physiological uh, psychology is basically one that's based on a Weltanschauung that's constructed internally. That is a basically an understanding of reality. And understanding of what's ultimately real, ultimate reality. And this is uh, an idea that Weiniger's obviously based the whole of his sex and character on, is basically your, your philosophy, your values, your morality it comes from this understanding of what's ultimately real. Um, this is what he refers to as that primary source that uh, exists, that is, even if there were no human beings to perceive it. Since ultimate reality continues whether there's consciousness or not, it's not, a, it's not an empirical thing, it's not an observed, you know, it's responsible for consciousness and everything else. So this is what he is talking about in a, the non-empirical psychology is basically um, your value system comes from this unchanging and permanent uh, um, essence to all existence. And what he's saying is that an empirical, a biological empirical psychology is basically trying to determine what is sanity relative to your society, relative to changing and finite things. So it is insane and it doesn't work. You know, it basically says that you're a decent and noble moral individual if you if you conform to your society and that's basically as the psychologists have it. Oops, almost fell off. So this is the first idea, he's, he's basically vindicating, as he said, vindicating the rights of a non-empirical psychology. Oh, where does the foot pad go now? I think it might go this way. And the other idea was, people often have this knee-jerk reaction to Weininger as an anti-Semite, simply because he criticises Jewishness. Uh, really? Who better to, to criticise Jewishness than a Jew? Why can't you criticise Jewishness? Why can't you criticise any culture? And this is, you know, he wasn't a Nazi. He, he wasn't advocating genocide or eugenics. I mean, he wrote about anti-Semitism as the hatred for traits one has oneself and tries to flee from, or segregate oneself from by projecting them onto other people. You know, you can blame someone else more easily than you can take responsibility for the problem yourself. That's what he called anti-Semitism. It's essentially this kind of criminal, criminal mentality of not taking responsibility. Um, he just happened to call it Jewishness because he saw Jews in his time as the strongest, most clearest examples of it, just as he regarded women have the, the strongest um, demonstrations of a will to unconsciousness, a will to unreason, if you can speak of a will, you know, when there's no consciousness.